Yoshi, you are just the cutest. What's going on guys? I'm Jeff, the Yoshi Fanatic, and today I wanted to take a closer look at the two most recent games in the Yoshi series. I'm talking of course about Yoshi's Woolly World and Yoshi's Crafted World. I've gone on the record saying that I prefer Woolly World over Crafted World, but... Is it really better? Now, I want to get a quick disclaimer out of the way. In order to make a fair comparison between the two games, I'll be playing through both games with a 100% complete playthrough. However, I'll only be comparing these games single player modes, as the multiplayer is... well... This is f***ing stupid with two people! Yeah, let's just say it's for the best. Also, I'll only be playing the original version of Yoshi's Woolly World for the sake of fairness. No ports allowed. Oh, don't worry, we'll get to this one, but that's for another time. With all that out of the way, it's Yoshi time! Yahoo! Now, both of these being Yoshi games, they have a lot in common, so let's go over some of the similarities between the two. First, the story is pretty superfluous in both, which is probably for the best given the nature of these games. They're fine for giving a baseline motivation for playing the game, but not much more than that. Let's just say that if you were going into either of these games looking for a deep and compelling story, you won't find it here. Both games largely revolve around the Yoshi's Island formula, where you play through a number of levels with the goal of getting to the end of every stage, and a heavy emphasis on collecting numerous items in each stage. Both have bosses and mini-bosses, with a final boss fight against Baby Bowser. Both get rid of the Baby Mario mechanic, and instead revolve around Yoshi having a dedicated health bar, although neither game is the first in the series to do this. Both are 2D platformers where Yoshi can gobble up enemies, lay eggs to throw at enemies, obstacles, and collectibles, and both use pretty much the same mechanics. Both games were developed by Goodfeel, who also developed Kirby's Epic Yarn, so both games make heavy use of the art style and the gameplay. Finally, the level design for both games is solid. Each new level relies on a new mechanic, which is introduced in a low-stakes environment that compounds the mechanic later in the level. Although I do have to give Crafted World some extra credit here, it largely got rid of the one-way door mechanic, which has plagued the Yoshi series for far too long now. I hope this becomes a mainstay in the series. Well, now that we've covered what these games have in common, it's time to talk about what makes them different. And oh boy, there's a lot to cover here. So, let's break it down by category, starting with story. Yoshi's Woolly World has a story more similar to Yoshi's Island, in which Kamek does some antics on behalf of Baby Bowser. In this case, he unravels almost all of the Yoshis for yarn to make Baby Bowser's castle bigger. The remaining Yoshis work their way to Baby Bowser's castle to confront him, stitching together some of their friends along the way. Yoshi's Crafted World is actually a bit more creative in the story department, though admittedly not by much. Kamek and Baby Bowser come to Yoshi's Island to steal the Sunstone, an artifact that can grant the wishes of its wielder. Also, it seems to be pretty special to Orange Yoshi over here. A confrontation between the Yoshis and Kamek and Baby Bowser results in the gems from the Sunstone dispersing, getting lost in the game's various locales. Both parties then try to find all of the gems, resulting in a final confrontation at Baby Bowser's castle. While I appreciate the more unique spin on the plot that Crafted World offers, both games have stories that are pretty bare bones, and don't really have much of an impact on either game overall. Moving on to the art styles, both games look great. They're pleasantly clean and polished, with a lot of attention to detail. However, the art styles between the two differ quite a bit. As the name would suggest, Yoshi's Woolly World is, well, woolly. It goes for a yarn-based art style, similar to Kirby's Epic Yarn or Little Big Planet. Everything in the world, including all of the characters, is made out of yarn and yarn-oriented materials, like string and crochet hooks. Yoshi's Crafted World leans into a more arts and crafts style, and is oriented largely around crafts and crafting materials, like cardboard, pipe cleaners, and paper plates. Both games lean into their respective art styles quite heavily, and make good use of their art styles in the gameplay. However, the overall appeal of the art style is largely lost on me. I've grown tired of games trying to make you feel like you're playing in a box of crafting materials and toys, rather than in another world. Yoshi's Crafted World definitely elicits this feeling, especially on the flip sides of stages, where you can see the cardboard boxes making up buildings and the like. 
Yoshi's Woolly World, on the other hand, more implies that Yoshi's World just happens to be made out of yarn, which makes its art style much more appealing to me. Alright, let's talk music. Like Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's Woolly World soundtrack is wonderful. Almost every stage has its own music, and there are no music tracks that are flat out bad. Most of the songs have a lot of potential to get stuck in your head. The music in this game is all very well put together, and it's easy to see the effort the composer put into the songs. By contrast, Yoshi's Crafted World approaches its soundtrack in a manner more similar to Yoshi's Story. It has a main overall theme, which is repeated in multiple levels, often having different inflections. There's a lot of slide whistles and other children's instruments used in this game, giving the music much more of a childish feeling. Now, I'm not saying Crafted World's music is bad or anything, but there's no competition. Yoshi's Woolly World is the clear winner here. In terms of level and world structure, Yoshi's Woolly World is nearly identical to Yoshi's Island. The game is split into six worlds, each with eight normal levels and one special level. There's also a seventh world that opens up after beating the main game. The level themes are also pretty standard, with no real standouts. On the other hand, Yoshi's Crafted World structure is quite a bit different, which is actually a good thing in my mind. The game is broken up into about 16 worlds, each with two or three levels. This allows for much more level variety and world themes, and it's a refreshing twist. The world also opens up after the first set of levels, allowing you to complete the levels in whatever order you'd want, to an extent. Even though this didn't go quite as far as I would have liked, it was nice to see a different approach to the world structure. Overall, the uniqueness of the level and world structure give Crafted World an edge over Woolly World in this category. Alright, time to talk about gameplay. This is the meat and potatoes of this comparison, so we'll have to break this down into a few subcategories. But before we do that, it should be noted that Crafted World features a 3D aspect in the gameplay, requiring you to focus on everything in the foreground and the background as opposed to just the two-dimensional plane. This has a big impact on several mechanics in the game. Both games are very similar in Yoshi's controls, almost identical in terms of how Yoshi walks, runs, jumps, flutter jumps, ground pounds, and gobbles enemies to make eggs. Yoshi's Crafted World does add things like canceling out of a ground pound and crawling, and while these are both nice additions, they aren't enough to make a huge difference. The bulk of the differences come down to the egg throwing. Yoshi's Woolly World is almost identical to Yoshi's Island in this regard, with a cursor that moves in an arc in front of Yoshi, and requiring you to line up the cursor with your target. You can lock the target to a position with a button press, and you can move and jump freely while readying the egg to be thrown. Yoshi's Crafted World is closer to Yoshi's story with its egg throwing. While readying the egg to be thrown, Yoshi stops moving and cannot jump, although he can still flutter jump if he was in the air while readying his egg, and he can aim the egg in a full 360 degrees. Where Crafted World really stands out is in its 3D egg throwing, which is excellent in concept, but I have some real issues with the execution. Instead of aiming in a true 3D manner, you aim the cursor in two dimensions, and the cursor will lock onto objects of interest in either the foreground or the background. This creates a few issues. First, you can't aim freely in 3D, and sometimes your 2D aiming will be hindered by objects in the foreground and background. Second, you can't lead your shot if the target is moving. This isn't a huge issue when the target is close, but if it's far away, the egg's travel time can result in a missed throw, which is especially irritating in some of the timed egg throw challenges. There is something that I absolutely loved about Crafted World's egg throwing, though. The egg jump. You can jump off of an egg ricocheted off a wall or the ground. This allows you to skip over large sections of obstacles, platform challenges, and puzzles, save yourself from bad jumps, and to get to otherwise inaccessible areas. This is a great addition, and I think it should be kept in all of the Yoshi games going forward. In both games, the boss design is pretty good, but their approach to the bosses makes a big difference. Yoshi's Woolly World's approach to bosses is very similar to that of Yoshi's Island. Each of the six worlds has a mid-boss in level 4, and an end-boss in level 8. Each of these boss fights take place at the end of what is essentially a standard level. The issue with this is that if you take any damage from the boss, you'll need to play the stage again to get full health for the stage. These bosses aren't that difficult, 
but many of them have a high chance of damaging you at least once, which gives the boss a false sense of difficulty. Yoshi's Crafted World handles the mini-bosses largely the same as Yoshi's Woolly World, however the bosses at the end of each world are given their own dedicated stage. This is great, because it takes away the stress of having to replay a stage if you get damaged by the boss. It is bizarre that they didn't do this with the mini-bosses though. And there is one boss that makes me question the E rating for this game. My gosh, Bert, think of the children! Yoshi's Woolly World, much like Yoshi's Island, has sections in several levels that transform Yoshi into various forms to play through a special challenge. I'd argue that Woolly World's transformations are more fun than Island's, though. I really enjoyed each of these transformations. They're fast, fun, and brief, so they don't outstay their welcome. Yoshi's Crafted World takes a different approach. Instead of transformation sections, this game implements vehicle levels, which see Yoshi driving a solar race car, operating a paper airplane, and even wreaking havoc in a Yoshi mech. These are each very unique, and I think they're quite creative. I think both games offer different but fun transformation sections, and I can't really decide which game I prefer in this regard. Yoshi's Woolly World has four different bonus objectives for each stage. Find all five flowers, find all five yarn bundles, find all 20 stamp gems, which are this game's equivalent to Yoshi's Island Red Coins, and finishing the level with full health. Since Nintendo shut down Miiverse, collecting the stamp gems doesn't do anything, and getting full health in a stage never did anything. However, collecting all of the yarn bundles in a stage gives you a new Yoshi costume, and collecting all of the flowers in every level in a world unlocks that world's special S level, which is a much more challenging stage for that world. These are great rewards for stage completion, and result in a satisfying completion run. Yoshi's Crafted World also has bonus objectives for each stage, but it works a bit differently here. Each stage has between 5 and 8 smiley flowers hidden in the level, and each stage also gives a smiley flower for finding all 20 red coins, getting full health, and collecting 100 coins. Kind of random, but okay. This is actually really nice, because all of the side objectives give you a reward in the form of smiley flowers. However, progression through the levels is tied to the smiley flowers, so in a way, your progression through the game depends on completing these bonus objectives. This is an interesting way of doing it, but I think it should have been done in a way similar to New Super Mario Bros. Star Coins, offering optional branching paths with optional levels and challenges. It also makes it less fun to complete the levels, since there isn't a real reward for doing so. Yoshi's Woolly World's primary post-game content is actually spread out throughout the whole game, the S levels. These levels offer a level of challenge that far surpasses that of the other levels in the game, which is awesome! And like Yoshi's Island, it was a great idea to spread them out through the whole game, as it gives a satisfying bit of challenge throughout the experience. This kept me from getting fatigued from the relative lack of challenge in the normal levels. Yoshi's Woolly World also features boss challenges, in which you fight each of the game's bosses again, but they're sped up by a significant amount. This is fun and relatively stress-free, since you don't have to get perfect health, but it's bare bones. It would have been awesome to have some varied challenge for each boss, rather than just speeding them all up. There's also one final level, which features sections that represent each of the game's six worlds, and it's a fitting wrap-up to the game. I didn't think it was as hard as the other S levels, though. Yoshi's Crafted World unlocks three additional levels, this game's S levels, and a boss fight with Kamek. These levels are harder than the rest of the levels in the game, but they're not as hard as I'd like them to be. Kamek's boss fight is awesome, and actually a lot more challenging than I expected. It takes aspects from a few of the other bosses in the game and cranks the difficulty up to 11. It definitely makes for a worthy final boss. After that, additional challenges unlock for the other boss fights. These involve completing the boss's fight in a limited time, finishing the fight with full health, and one challenge with boss-specific criteria. These are great, and the third objective gives each of the challenge boss fights more variety, which is awesome! I think I prefer how Yoshi's Woolly World handles its S levels, but I prefer how Yoshi's Crafted World handled its boss fights. Now, let's be clear. Neither of these games are winning any awards for their difficulty, though to be fair, they're both directed more towards children, as they are Yoshi games, so I didn't expect them to be super challenging. Yoshi's Woolly World is not very hard, but it offers a decent amount of challenge with the S levels especially, and finding all of the collectibles is not always an easy task. The game does offer badges to help you with hard-to-find collectibles or hard-to-beat stages, or even just for fun, 
Like, do you ever wish you could bring Poochie into any level with you? Well, now you can! Yoshi's Crafted World is, in my opinion, the easiest Yoshi game in the series, and lacked any real challenge aside from the Kamek boss fight. Even the special levels were pretty easy. Honestly, a five-year-old could beat this game pretty competently, and that's when you can tell they took it too far. Again, I know this game is meant for kids, but most of the Yoshi games still offer a satisfying experience for a veteran player. Not so much with this game. Also, the game doesn't offer assistive badges of any kind like Yoshi's Woolly World, but honestly, the game is so easy that you don't even need them. Alright, it's time to talk about the giant baby Bowser-sized elephant in the room. Even though Yoshi's Crafted World brought a lot of good things to the Yoshi gameplay formula, it also stumbled on quite a few things. This may be a hot take, but I hate the costumes. This game traded in the assistive badges for costumes, and these costumes are ugly in my opinion. In addition to that, all they do is act as a shield, which makes an already easy game even easier. Plus, there are 178 of them, and each of them cost a good amount of coins to unlock. While it's nice having something to spend coins on, this ain't it, chief. That's not my main issue with this game, though. 100% completing Yoshi's Woolly World took about 15 hours. Yoshi's Crafted World took about 24 hours, but only about 12 hours of that was getting all the normal collectibles in each stage. So, where did the extra 12 hours come from? Well, to start off with, after you beat a level normally, you need to play through the level backwards, searching for three Poochie Pups hidden throughout the level, and you have to do so in a certain amount of time to get all four smiley flowers for the flip side of the stage. While this is fine in concept, this applies to every level in the game, and it doesn't change things up at all in any of the levels. It's always just finding the Poochie Pups. This is a huge wasted potential, especially considering how much Nintendo played up the idea of the flip sides in early trailers for the game. Next, after you beat the game, this little robot guy, Blockefeller Jr., will hide in each stage, and will give you a smiley flower for every stage you find him in. This means that you have to play through each of the levels AGAIN! But even that doesn't compare to this. I'VE GOT ANOTHER REQUEST! Those words will always make me cringe. This is where the bulk of your playtime will come from in this game. This robot guy, named Blockefeller, will ask you to find him a set of souvenirs in each stage. These souvenirs are usually objects in the foreground or background that represent different characters or enemy types in the game, like Goonies, for example. This may all sound fine, but here's the catch. He wants you to find multiple souvenir types in each stage, and he will only ask you to get one set of them per additional playthrough of the stage. This is like doing your grocery shopping like... Okay, so the first thing on my list is milk. Okay, so the next item on my list is bread. Okay, next is butter. There are also 121 souvenir types in this game. 125 if you take into consideration the crafts you have to find in multiple levels. That is an insane number of extra collectibles to find. Now, you can find little Blockefeller while you're looking for the souvenirs, so that's at least manageable. But even with that, to 100% complete the game, including finding the Poochie Pups and the souvenirs, you'll have to play through each level an average of five times. And that's assuming you find everything on your first try, which you absolutely won't. And your reward for 100% completion is... Another costume. Phew, well that should just about cover everything. So is Yoshi's Woolly World really better than Yoshi's Crafted World? Well the answer is yes, but it's not quite that simple. Yoshi's Woolly World offers the more consistently good Yoshi game experience. It's essentially another Yoshi's Island type game, and it's a joy to 100% complete. Yoshi's Crafted World, on the other hand, has a lot of good things going for it, but also has a lot of negatives. 
it's the more experimental Yoshi game, bringing a lot of new things to the Yoshi series. Some of these things should be mainstays going forward, and others should be buried in a hole and never dug up again. I'm looking at you, Blockefeller. So overall, Yoshi's Woolly World is the better choice to go with if you're looking for a consistently good Yoshi game in the vein of Yoshi's Island. But, if you're looking for something that shakes up the Yoshi's Island formula, give Yoshi's Crafted World a try. Just, for the sake of your sanity and your schedule, do not 100% complete this game. It's absolutely a waste of time to do so. I mean, unless you really like that last Yoshi costume. Yeah, I just don't see it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's been a while since my last video, but I'm planning to make these videos more often, so if you enjoyed this one, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Also, I post updates and chat with the fans in my Discord server, so feel free to join in. Thanks again for watching, guys. See you next time.